All right. Yeah. It's been a strange week. <laughs> all right. Uh, many, many events are happening all over the world. All right. And uh, actually, what we did last week, you know, did also has some reference, okay, to what's happening right now. And uh, we know that uh, there is a tussle, all right, for land in uh, Israel um, by the Palestinians. Uh, and uh, there's a lot of uh, blurred lines around what's happening and what's the truth. And uh, I come to understand the devil's greatest deception, okay, is mixed truth. Always. So that's why we can't discern without the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We will be attracted to our own understanding, to our own thinking, what is right and what is wrong. But who are we to judge what is right and what is wrong? Yeah, because we are not the Creator, we are only His creation. Right? And, uh, yeah, I do see that, okay, some Christians, okay, do not uh, understand, even uh, good friends of mine, and they also do criticize Israel. And I did mention, okay, that Israel today that you see is not the Israel that God wants for a bride. All right? It's not God wants, okay, for his. It needs to still go through a lot of processes. So today what we are seeing here is a lot of secular Jews that are on the news today and hardly orthodox Jews, all right? Meaning, okay, Judaism is not what you see today. What you see is secularism, okay, mixed with Judaism. And we can see that in Jesus' time when we had the Sadducees and also the Pharisees. The Pharisees were very, very orthodox. But the Sadducees were much liberal, okay, they just wanted life now. There's no afterlife. They want to enjoy life now. And that is what we see in secular Israel today. Okay? So, going back to Genesis 23, yeah, we saw that at the death of Sarah, when she was 127 years old, we saw that Abraham wanted to bury Sarah in the promised land. Not from the land that they came from. Because Abraham clung and held on to the promise God gave to him. He's the chosen one. And he has fulfilled his greatest task. And that was to sacrifice Isaac as their sacrificial lamb. But it was replaced by the ram in the ticket. Now, he begins to see he has a son, that chosen one by God, his name Isaac. Isaac was very close with the mother, right? When the mother passed on, Abraham knew, okay, he needs to comfort Isaac. As you can see, at the end of the, this passage, we saw that 
Isaac was comforted after the mother's death. Okay, I'm jumping ahead, yeah. So I'm trying to say that, okay, Abraham began to see he has to go on and fulfill, even though his life partner, Sarah, had just passed on. They cannot mourn on forever. We saw that Abraham also mourned and weeped for Sarah. So, chapter 23, we saw that Abraham bought a barrel site for Sarah. And not only for Sarah, for his descendants as well. So we will see that this is the burial site for the patriarchs of Israel. Abraham will be buried there. Isaac, Rebecca, Jacob, Leah. And today, it is still standing in the land of Israel. It's called Hebron. Now let's, so this is the birth of Israel. Accusation. Alright. Land not by force. Okay, by negotiations and purchase of money. Very legal. Very legal. Okay. So you will see that God is the one, okay, that has instituted this. We will see this maybe the next maybe next few uh, verses okay that we will go through. So let's recap, yeah. So Abraham was from the Ur of Chaldees. Yeah. And God called him out and told him that God will make him a great nation. Right? And then he says, Out from your bowels, okay, will come forth nations. So, the mystery unfolds, the vision gets clearer, and then God says in Genesis 15.8, Genesis 15, 18, I believe. Yeah, where God marked out the territory for Abraham and says, this is your promised land. All right, and uh, let's go. Chapter 15, yeah? So actually before um, chapter 15, we also see in chapter 12, sorry, chapter 13, you know, after... God encouraged, yeah, encourage Abraham. And then he told him, you know, after separation from the Lord, because Lord wanted that wonderful land, which is Sodom and Gomorrah. And God says to Abraham, verse 14, yeah, 13, 14. All right, and says that, the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lord was separated from him, Lift up now your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, westward. For all the land that you see to it, will I give it, and to your seed forever. Again, okay? to your seed forever. Now, when you want to see about the seed, it's not about seeds, okay? It is one coming down from a generation of Abraham, okay? Isaac, Jacob, David. Eventually, it comes down to Jesus. Jesus is a seed. All right? And here he says that, I will make your seed as the dust of the earth so that a man can number the dust of the earth so thy seed shall also be numbered all right arise walk through the land in the length of it in the breadth of it for it i will give it to you all right so from out of jesus we will see nations kingdoms all congregating to that new covenant kingdom 
that will be established when we come into our heavenly Jerusalem where Jesus Christ comes to reign as king of all nations hallelujah so chapter 15 God begins to make the calling the vision clearer and he tells Abram now you have seen the land let me show you I mark the boundaries for you okay 15 18 in the same day Lord God made a covenant with Abraham saying unto thy seed all right have I given this land from the river of Egypt unto the great river Euphrates okay so the great river of Egypt okay it includes Gaza all right and um, yeah, the great river Euphrates, okay, you guys know, right? All the Arab nations surrounding it. So this is what God has already marked a boundary for the land of promise. 1718. Abraham said unto God, you know, sorry. 17 8 sorry 17 8 yeah so God says to Abraham I will give unto you and to your seed after thee the land which thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession I will be their God right an everlasting possession so we saw that also in Ezekiel God says that as long as the stars and the sun shines, my covenant with Israel will I not break. Will I not break. So, going, coming back to Genesis 23. So, this is, so actually Genesis uh, 21. We also saw okay, the beginning of God already making inroads into Abraham that Abraham already now is full-fledged to give in all that he has for the promised land and we saw that when there was a squabble between um, Abimelech right and uh, and his um, servants over the well and Abraham bought that well, all right, that well from Abimelech, even though that well was dug by Abraham himself. He bought it for seven ewe lambs, all right, and that place is called Bathsheba, all right. John, Genesis 23, so we see right now. Abraham buys Netherlands. This is the barrel site, Hebron. All right, the Cape of Machpelah, Hebron. Now we go a few books. Okay, why God is the one that has instituted buying land, though we don't see it here, but God understands Abraham and Abraham is a friend of God and Abraham says that I will buy this to show my God is great even though you sell it to me at exorbitant price even ten times higher the price I buy it and you give me the deed so that no one will be able to challenge in the days to come now we look at Joshua, book of Joshua 24, verse 32. Joshua 24, verse 32, yeah. At the end of the book of Joshua, okay, we see that Joseph having rescued or delivered, yeah, the children of Israel from the famine and 
Joseph is getting old and he wanted his bones not to be buried in Egypt, but he wants it to be buried in the land of the promise. And he told his children, bring my bones okay, back to my burial land. So his children fulfilled his promise. So we see this, yeah? And the bones of Joseph, 24-32, Joshua, 24-32, yeah? And the bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up from Egypt, buried they in Shechem, in a parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a for hundreds of pieces of silver, and it became an inheritance of the children of Joseph. Alright, so we see here another purchase. Yeah. And what about the prophet Jeremiah? Let's look at Jeremiah. Jeremiah 32. Jeremiah 32. Verse 6. And Jeremiah said, The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hanamil, the son of Shalom, your uncle, shall come to you, saying, Buy my field that is in Ananoth, for the right of the redemption is in you to buy it. So Hanamil, his uncle, came to him in the court of the prison. That time Jeremiah was. Um, was imprisoned, yeah, was imprisoned. Yeah. So he came to the prison and said, By my field, I pray thee, that is in Ananoth, which is in the country of Benjamin, for the right of inheritance is yours, and the redemption is yours. Buy it for yourself, then I knew that it was the word from the Lord. Because earlier, Jeremiah heard from the Lord, Buy the land. Right. So I believe, by the land, not only for for the burial of Sarah, but for your descendants. Yeah. And um, we, so we saw that okay, he bought the land. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Okay, so I bought the land of Hannah Mill, my uncle's son, that was in Anandoff and weighed him the money, even 17 shekels of silver. And I subscribed the evidence, sealed it, took witnesses, and weighed him the money in the balances. So I took evidence of the purchase, both that which was custom, that which was open. All right, I gave evidence of the purchase to Barak, son of Nerea, son of uh, Masela in the sight of Hanamil, my uncle's son, in the presence of witnesses that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. All right. I charged Barak before them. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed, and this evidence which is open, put them in the earthen vessel that they may continue for many days. So God says, this is evidence of land bought, all right, seal it as an evidence, put it in an earthen vessel, for they may continue many days. So when you talk about days in the Bible, it can mean years, yeah? It can mean years. Okay, that's what it means, days. It doesn't mean days, right? It means years. All right. For thus save the Lord of hosts, God of Israel, houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. So what is this? This is a prophetic act that God told Jeremiah, buy the land because God knows this land will be taken over. It will also drive the children out of the land. 
into exile. But because of this, God says, buy, seal it as an evidence for the days to come. So we see that, okay, God wants his children not only by words of promise, which is good enough, but he also gives him material evidence. Material evidence. And what more about King David? Yeah? Where King David bought the land from around uh, yeah, the Jebusite. Where David built the temple there. Made an altar there, yeah? And today it's a temple mount. You can find it in Second Samuel 24, verse 24. Okay, so, so what I'm trying to say is there are biblical evidence, historical evidence that Israel, okay, rightly is the owner of the land that they are in today. King David conquered. He defeated the Philistines. The Philistines are no more. All right. The people that conquered and tortured the Jews, today they are no more. But then we see that the Jews are still alive. The smallest community in the whole world. And God looks after them. All these years, God gave the, the, the promise to Abraham around maybe 1,800 years ago. Yeah? King David, 1,600 years BC, conquered the land. Yeah? And then divided the land. They were there. Thousands of years until yeah, they aroused the wrath of God by going after strange gods, yeah, worshipping demons. And that's where the fall came. And God rightly administered justice to them. But all the time, they were the right owners. They have possession of the land by conquest, yeah, by deeds, and most importantly, okay, by the promise of God. And like I said last week, today the history that you see, yeah, is only one fifth of what is the true land of promise. One fifth. When you have five, you can see the grace of God overflowing in the land of Israel. So may I just add, Islam came 600 years after Christ. And now, they want to challenge the possession and how can it be? They came only 600 years after Christ. Where the Jews has been in the land of Canaan for thousands of years. And we know that there's historical artifacts showing okay, that Israel settled there, the Jewish settlements there. Alright, so uh, okay, that will wrap up last week's about the land that um, God asked Abraham to start buying, which Abraham was the first one. And then we saw Joshua, we saw Jeremiah, we saw King David. And if you go to history, you can even see that the Jews bought lands, yeah, the swamp lands, for exorbitant 
high prices even before the independence of Israel. Everything is there. They bought it legally. So they are not occupiers. They are not occupants. All right? They are the rightful owners. It's only because that time and the British parted the land you know, to the two, two, uh, two states. Before that, Emperor Hadrian, the Romans, changed the land, the name of Judah, all right, to Syria, Palestine. Why? Because the Romans hated the Jews and they wanted to remember that their enemies defeated them. And their perennial enemies are the Philistines. So they changed the name of Judah all right, into Syria, Palestine. So when the deed was signed, you can see that it is a name Palestine there. But people do not go back to the history of it. They stayed there and they are arguing there. So there is this lamentation that people are still in the dark of the truth of Israel. Exodus 24. So we see that Exodus, <laughs> Exodus 24. Genesis 24. And Abraham was old, well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh, and I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you shall not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. But you shall go into your country, sorry, when you shall go into my country, to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto Abraham, Preadventure the woman will not be willing to follow me into this land, but I need to bring your son again to the land where you came from. And Abraham said unto him, Beware that you do not bring my son there again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house and from the land of my kindred, which spoke unto me, that swear unto me, saying, Unto your seed will I give this land, and he shall send his angel before you, and you shall take a wife unto my son then. So Abraham was old, well stricken in age. So old, what is old and well stricken? Now, in the original, okay, old here means he has attained a status, an eldership, right? So this is the meaning. And the second one is well stricken in age. He is definitely, all right, old. And how old is he? At this time, he's around 140 years old. Yeah. We know that in Genesis 21, when he was 100 years old, Isaac was born. Right? It's now 37 years. And we saw that in last chapter, Sarah dies. And if we go forward to chapter 25, okay, we see that Isaac will be 40 years old. Okay, we're jumping ahead, yeah? When Isaac gets betrothed, married, yeah? So that makes him 140 years old. So Abraham was old, all right? Knowledge, he was, he attained knowledge, status, okay? He, the eldership of the land. And he was getting really very, very old. 
The Lord says that he had blessed Abraham in all things. In all things. All right? Even as we understand in Ephesians 1, 3, God says, I have blessed you in all things in the heavenly places. That is also our heritage. Our inheritance. Remember, by faith, when we put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, by faith, we are sons of Abraham. And the blessings of Abraham flow unto us. Verse 2, And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of the house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, your hand under my thigh. It was custom yeah, at that time to take a swearing or an oath that they put their hands under the thigh. The thigh being the strongest muscle yeah, of the body. The thigh also connecting okay, to life, the wellspring of life. All right, to even um, the genitals. And Abraham was telling the servant, swear unto me upon the promise that God has given to me from my loins there will come forth the great nations. There will come forth that seed. Now remember, yeah, Abraham do not have the Bible that we have today. And he is thinking that the seed, Isaac, is the deliverer. As prophesied in Genesis 3, 15, 16. Remember when Adam and Eve um, disobeyed God and God said, right, that this is the curse, that your offspring yeah, will bruise the head but the enemy shall only bruise your heel they are waiting for that deliverer and the first one they thought was um, Cain okay, but Cain was not the deliverer then they thought it was Noah okay, Noah was not the deliverer and it goes on and goes on and goes on you see, God will not reveal until the time. So sometimes, okay, it's not profitable, okay, for us to go and guess um, a lot of things about God because when He reveals, He reveals. When He doesn't reveal, He doesn't reveal. But we go to lots of lengths to want to know who the Antichrist is. All right, when is he coming? These are things and events, okay, God has prepared and withheld from us. Why? He wants us to do the great and right thing. Go and proclaim the gospel. That's the most important thing. But we see there are so many things that we Christians like to dwell into which are not necessary. Does it benefit you if you know who the Antichrist is? What can you do? I just I just had a you know a question you know from someone in the chat again. Who you think the Antichrist is? I said I do not know. Though I have a few um, notions. I told him. I said Antichrist are there. There are not only one. There may be a few. Because the devil does not know when God will strike. So he will always need to prepare Antichrist for every generation. For every generation, there will be the Antichrist. But will he be the one that will be sitting in the third temple? So, want to know 
Okay. Look at the signs of Israel. Okay. Do not look at okay what are the technology, what they are doing and all this kind of stuff. Look at Israel. Israel is your compass. Alright, so that being said. So Abraham thought that Isaac will be the deliverer. Not knowing okay that there will be more. Isaac will bear more children. Yeah. Jacob. All right, which is uh, will be Israel, and then they will, they will form twelve tribes, and on and on and on. Abraham doesn't know. God only reveals this to him because that is his portion of his calling. That is his portion of his assignment. No need no more. Remember when uh, Peter was asking Jesus because Jesus told Peter that okay he will be carved to a torturous death. Yeah. And he asked about John. Then what did Jesus say? He says, What is it to you? What is it to you if he leaves? I come. What if Jesus trying to say says, mind your own business. Mind your own business. All right. Christians, mind our own business. Whatever God has given you to do, do it magnificently. Not looking to the left, not looking to the right. What God asks you to do, do it. Don't get so scattered you want to know this you want to do this or to do that focus on what God wants you to do God has given every one of us an assignment and a calling walk according to the assignment walk according to the calling and you will make your father glad so he put his hand under Abraham's tie and Abraham made him swear by the Lord of God of heaven and the God of earth, you shall not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Now who is this servant? Yeah, it's not mentioned here. But we can understand from the from the chapters before. That Abraham has one head servant. And this servant looked after his entire household when Isaac was not around, when Ishmael was not around. Yeah. So this is Eliza of Damascus. Now, why Eliza of Damascus? Does he hail from Damascus? The Bible scholar says, okay, that Eliza of Damascus was the one that was with Abraham who chased the four kings yeah, unto Damascus. This is the Eliza. This is the one, okay, that was in Abraham's servant house that God rallied him. 318 people yeah, to go and fight the four kings that attacked Sodom and Gomorrah that took Lot his nephew. And uh, interestingly Elijah if you count it numerically okay, it totals 318. Right, three one eight. So Elijah of Damascus was the one called by Abraham to go 
and search for a wife for Isaac. So, do you wonder, okay, why is it that Abraham did not give that liberty to Isaac to find a wife? Well, probably that was a culture at the time, okay, that uh, arrangements, <coughs> okay, uh, were made by parents, okay, for marriages. It could be. Yeah, I think it should be because we have we have seen even our uh, great great grandparents. Okay, most of their parents uh, of their marriages. Okay, were arranged. Were arranged. Yeah, yeah, not like they dated and then they fell in love. Right, it was not like that. Okay, it was prearranged marriage. So he says to Elijah, "Go, all right, and find my son a wife, but not from this land." All right, but go back to my kindred, okay, to where I came from and get him from my own king's men. Yeah, a wife for my son. And the, uh, Elijah said, what if, okay, what if that wife cannot be found. What if, if I find that wife for Isaac, he is not, she is not willing to come. He says that if, okay, you have found that woman that is to be Isaac's wife from my kinsmen, yeah, if they are not to want to follow you to the land, then you are free from this oath. But he says, again, he warns his servant Elijah, beware that you do not bring my son there again. Verse 7, the Lord of heaven, which took me from my father's house, okay, God, Abraham is telling again, Elijah, Elijah, yeah, the promise that God has given to Abraham. And Elijah knows because he has been with Elijah for such a long time, for such a long time. Verse 9, And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear, to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of camels of the masters and departed, for all the goods of the master were in the hand, and he arose and went to Mesopotamia, yeah, unto the city of Nahor. Okay, so we know, okay, that Elijah now is going back to where Abraham came from. Okay? The earth of the child is. Yeah? Now he's going back to where? To the land of Nahor. Why? Because Abraham and Nahor, okay, are kinsmen. And he made his camels to kneel down outside the city by a well of water at the time of evening, at the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of the water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink. And I will give your camel drink also. Let the same be she that you have appointed for your servant Isaac. Thereby I shall know that you have showed kindness to my master. And it came to pass before that, before he had even done speaking, that behold, Rebekah came out 
who was born to Methuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with the pitcher upon her shoulder. So we see here that Elijah was praying to God. He was speaking to God. And even before the prayer ended, the answer came. Hallelujah. God says that even before you come to me, I know your needs. Before you open your mouth, I know what you will ask of me. He says that Elijah definitely knows his chance. And God definitely knows what he wants. Yeah. Even before he finishes the prayer, the answer came. Wow. Have any one of you experienced this? Even, you know, you know, before you finish your prayer, wow, the answer comes. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Yeah. Not only did the, the, the answer came, yeah, it came according to the prayer. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. Immediately. You see, when God shows us the way, there is no hesitancy. Immediately you do it. You see from the example of Abraham and how Elijah has learned this example from his master. When God says, do it, immediately he does it. The Bible says that early in the morning, Abraham, Immediately. So here we see that Elijah exemplified Abraham. And when he saw the answer, when he saw that this is God's will, he chanced upon it. He rushed into it. He says, he ran. He ran to meet that damsel and said, let me drink a little water from thy pitcher. And she said, drink, my Lord. Right, And she hurried and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. She also right, gave her drink, but also in, in a fast motion, she gave it to him. You see, when it's God's timing and God's purpose and God's will, things just fall into place. It just blends in beautifully. And things will just go smoothly. When she had given him drink, she said, Also, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. So first one, okay, Elijah saw, okay, this is one, okay, of uh, the check boxes checked, okay. She's willing to let me have a drink. But what about my animals? What about the camels? All right. You see, Elijah did not ask. He waited for an answer. And, okay, the damsel opened her mouth and said, I will give, draw water for your camels also until they are done drinking. Imagine, yeah, 10 camels. And camels, uh, you know, they just don't drink a little bit. They drink a lot. Yeah. So, we see that Elijah possessed wisdom in choosing a wife for Isaac. And Abraham chose correctly what he wanted the end result. 
it goes to show when God opened his open our eyes to him he knows us he knows what we can do he knows what we achieve for him there's no need for Abraham to to tell him what to do because all the wisdom is already in Elijah so he says I want this kind of woman okay wife why she's humble all right she's very courteous yeah. all the all the qualities of a woman or a wife that Isaac will need and the man wondering at her held his peace whether the Lord has made his journey prosperous or not so Abraham just kept quiet and watched this damsel fetching water all right from the well to the throw for the camels to drink one after another it may be ours but this damsel kept to her word and she continually did what she said that she will water the camels all this time Elijah was just gazing and wondering will she make it will she make it will she water all my ten camels verse 22 and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets of her hands and ten shekels weight of gold and said whose daughters are you tell me i pray thee is there room in your father's house that i may lodge in so this also customary okay for people to uh, be invited yeah to the houses and they were very willingly welcome yeah strangers it is their custom so this is also another trait that Elijah was looking for okay not now not of this themselves character because it has been checked and proven but the damsel's family how she has been brought up are the parents hospi hospitable as she is will they will also be hospitable hospitable okay to nomads to strangers that are passing through and the answer is she said unto him I am the daughter of Bethuel the son of Melchah which bore unto Nahal and she said moreover unto him we have both straw and provender enough room for lodge in okay not only will Elijah Abraham's servant have place to sleep to lodge in even the camels all right will be taken care of wow And the man bowed down, bowed his head and worshipped the Lord. So we see that Elijah bowed his head and worshipped God. And the worship here is not lifting up our hands. It was a flat prostrate, all right, on the ground, prostrated, worshipping God. And he said, Bless be the Lord of my God of my master Abraham who has not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth I being in the way the Lord led me to the house of the master's brethren and the damsel ran and told them of the mother's house these things and Rebekah had a brother and his name was Laban and Laban ran out unto the men unto the well and it came to pass when he saw her 
the earrings and the bracelets upon the sister's hands. And when he heard the words of Rebekah, his sister, saying, Pass, speak the man unto me, that he came unto the man. And behold, he stood by the camels at the well, and said, Come in. Thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore stand thou outside? For I have prepared the house and the room for the camels. Now here, okay, we see that, okay, what did Laban saw first? He saw the earrings, all right, and the bracelets upon the sister's hands. Now, let's delve a little bit into earrings. Huh? Now, this earrings here is not earrings, yeah? It is actually nose rings. Actually, nose rings is not earrings, yeah? And uh, if I can remember, you know, most of us, okay, will know, okay? Who will still have nose rings, okay, in their nose, right? Of course, sometimes, okay, we see, uh, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, the the Gen Z, okay, they will also, you know, pierce the earrings, okay, you know, in their ears, in their nose, even on their tongue, whatever, right, okay? Um, yeah, that is, that is, okay, okay, not from God, all right. But here we're talking about the nose rings, okay, we know that, okay, um, the Hindus, all right, um, here, okay, we, we have the, the Indians, okay, will have nose rings, okay, in their nose. So where did all this come from? Yeah. So actually, the Jews also, after the persecution, okay, they did go to India. They did, did, did go to India, yeah. So uh, actually, in India, I think there are three very main Jewish tribes in India. They are the Bani Israel, all right. They are located in the Maharashtra. They have uh, the Bahagadi. All right, um, they are located near Surat, Mumbai. And we have the Persian Jews. They are the oldest living Jewish community in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they thrive in Malabar. All right. They came, you know, 2,000 years ago yeah, into India. And uh, after, okay, Israel had independence, they moved away back to Israel, back to, some of them went, not into Israel, went to UK and went to US, yeah. But we have Jews, all right, in all parts of the world, yeah. And here specifically, okay, when you talk about no strings, okay, we know that, okay, the Jews, okay, were displaced into India, yeah, and we also see okay that there are no strings there. So whether it is a Indian custom, all right, Hindu custom, okay, that needs to be researched. Okay, but we're trying to say okay that yeah, the Jews okay did have no rings. Yeah, and today we see that India, all right, they still practice this. Yeah, they also have um, dowries, all right. A lot of things, okay, that are associated with Jewish customs. So actually, if we go into a lot of our customs, all right, we can see that, okay, there are always some uh, relation, okay, to Jewish customs. There is even the Chinese, all right. I do not know about um, the Filipinos, all right, <laughs> yeah. I do not know about Africans. Yeah, I do not know, right? Okay, you guys can go and do your research. And who knows, you can come back and tell us. Yeah, so here the earrings are not the earrings, okay, but the nose ring. But we also know, okay, that okay, they also wear earrings. Yeah, so on the nose and on the ear. So we saw that Laban saw, okay, this wonderful earrings, nose rings, and also bracelet on the sister's hand. And says, welcome, 
come in. All right. Why are you standing there? <laughs> and the man came into the house. All right. And ungirded his camels, gave straw and provender for the camels, water to wash his feet and the man's feet that were with him. All right. So we see that Eliza did not come alone. Okay. He came with a troop of men. There were 10 camels. All right. And they were bringing dowry. They were bringing wedding presents. Okay, to woo, to woo, okay, Isaac to be wife. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. Sorry, uh, let's go to verse 33. Yeah? And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat until I have told you of my errand. And he said, speak on. Abraham chose correctly. He knew that Elijah will not disappoint him. Even tired, he and his men traveling, I think, 430 miles yeah, to seek a wife for Isaac. I'm sure they would love to rest. I'm sure they would love to have wonderful food but that was not the important thing the important thing was to do God's will to fulfill God's will and he says I am Abraham's servant the Lord has blessed my master greatly and he has become great he has given him flocks, herds, silver, gold, men servants, maid servants, camels and asses. And Sarah, my master's wife, bare a son to my master when he was old, and unto him has he given all that he has. And my master said and made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. But you shall go to my father's house to my kindred, kinsmen, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Preadventure, the woman will not follow me. And he said, The Lord before whom I walk will send his angel before thee. Prosper your way, and you shall take a wife for my son of my kindred, of the father's house. And you shall be clear from this hope when you come to your kindred. And they give, and if they give not thee one, you shall be clear of my oath. So Elijah is rehearsing, okay, what was uh, what transpired and what was the oath between Abraham and Elijah. Word for word, yeah, everything. He did not skip a beat, yeah. Everything it is down to the detail. And I came today to the well and said, O oh Lord God, my master. So again, he's telling these damsels and the dam sorry, he's telling the damsel's parents, okay, how God has prospered him. Yeah, into finding this wife for Isaac. O oh Lord God, my master Abraham, if now Thou do prosper my way which I go. Behold, I stand by the well of the water, and it shall come to pass that when the, we, the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I give unto her, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water on my pitcher drink. And she say to me, Both drink you, and I also draw for your camels. Let it be the same of the woman whom the Lord has appointed out of my master's son. And before I had done speaking in my word, sorry, in my heart, behold, Rebecca came forth. So this, okay, now the name is revealed. Rebecca came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down on the well and drew water and said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. Very specific, very detailed. And she made haste. And she put down her pitcher from her shoulder and said, Drink. 
I shall give the camel's drink also. So I drank, and she made the camel's drink also. So what Elijah is doing, okay, Elijah is rehearsing the oath between Abraham, right, and Elijah, and Elijah's prayer to God, and how God has revealed that this damsel is the one for Isaac. So, verse 47, I asked her and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Bethel, Nahor's son, whom Morkor bare unto him, and I put the earring upon her face. So you see, put earring upon her face, okay, the nose rings upon her face, and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head and worshipped the Lord, and blessed everything in detail. Even worshipping the Lord, you know, putting the bracelet, everything. He remembers everything. Which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now, if you will deal with me kindly, truly with my master, tell me, if not, tell me that I may turn to the right and left and, and go. Then Laban and Betuel said, the thing that proceeded from the Lord, we cannot speak unto thee bad or good. So Laban, okay, and Betuel answered the Elijah now, okay. Now the thing, okay, that proceeds from the Lord, okay, I cannot say it's good or it's bad. All right, you are telling me all this, okay. Um, yeah, but he says, behold, Rebecca is before you. Take her, go, and let her be your master's wife, as the Lord has spoken. So he says that. Now, if it's God's will, let it be done. Alright? Let it be done. But, from the conversation you see later on, yeah? So, it, verse 30, 52, And it came to pass that when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver, Jewels of gold, raiment, and gave to Rebekah, and he gave also to her brother and to the mother precious things. Then only did they eat and drink, and he and the men that were with him tarried all night, and they rose up in the morning and said, Send me away to my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel stay with us for a few days, for at least ten. After that she shall go. Okay, again when you say days, alright, it does not mean days. It may mean weeks, it may mean months. Yeah. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord has prospered my way. Send me away that I may go to my master. They said, We will call the damsel and inquire of her at her mouth. And they called Rebecca and said unto her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. They sent away Rebekah, their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said unto her, You are our sister. Be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those who hate them. And Rebekah arose, and the damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the men. The servant took Rebekah and went his way. And Isaac came from the vale of Laharoi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the even time. And he lifted up his eyes and he saw, behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes and he saw Isaac and lighted off the camel. For she said unto the servant, what man is this that walks in the field to meet us? And the servant said, It is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things they had done. And Isaac brought her into her mother's, her mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah and she became his wife. And he loved her and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So remember I said, okay, Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Okay, here actually we see there's a typology, all right, in this story here. 
uh, what is the typology? Abraham. Okay. Remember, there's a parable that we know. Okay, a man. Okay, sent out. Okay, his servant. What to look for a bride for his son. Yeah. Now, consider this. Elijah, sorry, Elijah, okay, what is his name? His name means the help of God, or God is help. Alright? And interestingly, Elijah, this man, in this passage, is not named. Yeah? Is not named. There's no name for this person. Yeah. So what is the typology here now? Abraham sends Elijah to look for a son for his wife. Elijah, okay, sends sorry. Abraham sends Elijah, okay, to look for a wife for his son. The same thing, yeah. God has sent His Holy Spirit to look for a bride for His Son. Abraham represents God or the King. Yeah. Elijah the servant represents the Holy Spirit. We know the Holy Spirit does not talk about himself. He does not brag about himself. He only brags about his master. He only talks about Jesus. And we see what are the requirements of being a chaste wife. You see all these qualities exhibited in Rebecca. Rebecca represents the church. And Isaac, as we know from the previous chapters, uh, I'm not sure Genesis which yeah, where Abraham sacrificed Isaac. Yeah, he's a type and shadow of Christ. Wonderful, isn't it? How we study the Bible, how God is trying to show us Himself. Yeah, His will and His purpose for us through this little book that we have. Wow. And we see that there is now a transferring all right, of um, rulership or kingdom to Isaac. Yeah. We saw that Abraham all right, and Sarah bore this son Isaac. Now Sarah has now passed on. Abraham is going to pass. All right, this calling, okay, to Isaac to continue on, and Isaac needs a wife to start a nation. So, in a sense, Isaac will be replacing Abraham and Rebecca, Isaac's wife to be, will be replacing Sarah to continue on the lineage. As we see, our Lord Jesus Christ will receive 
the kingdom from the Father. And we, the church, will be joined together with our Lord Jesus Christ in that wonderful, wonderful wedding banquet. There are so many typologies that we can find in the customs of the Jewish people, the parables, the stories, unsurmountable, how great our God is, how great His wisdom is. No wonder Elijah worshipped and bowed down and worshipped the God of the universe. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you for this wonderful afternoon, this wonderful day, Lord. We pray, Father, that we have understood your will and your purpose for our life. Lord, we pray that every one of us shall know our calling and will know how to align ourselves to your call, to your voice, so that, Lord, we will make you proud. We will accomplish what you have prepared for us, O oh God. Lord, at this time, Father, I will pray for the land of Israel, Lord, that you promised to your people. Lord, I just pray, Lord, for the uprising, the chaos in Israel right now. Lord, I just pray, may your peace come upon Jerusalem. Oh Lord, we, we speak peace, Lord, upon Jerusalem, O Father, Lord. We bless Israel, O God. Even, Lord, you have commanded us to bless. We will bless Israel, O God. Lord, we pray, Lord, for your perfect will to be done, O God. Lord, I pray, may all the lies that have been heaped upon your chosen nation, Lord, may it, Lord, come to nothing, O God. Lord, I pray, let your perfect will be done that, Lord, eventually, Lord, your people, Lord, will inhabit the, the land of promise, Lord, and they will heap praises to you, Lord. We thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name. Amen.